Hello, my name is Jay Lofton, and today I would like to talk to you about pulling threads. This year I had the privilege of going on a journey with seven wonderful scholars, and the premise was simple. Ask a question and spend one year studying it. Well, this started out as a simple journey in asking a question about individuals and certain points in history, like Machiavelli. Most people assume Machiavelli was the left hand of the devil. And yet Sybil, a young scholar in my class, proved that Machiavelli was the right hand of God. That without Machiavelli, and of course Martin Luther and the Reformation, and of course Henry VIII's problem with women, there would have been no Western empire, no Western culture, no Western world. But Machiavelli is a key part of it. She learned that by pulling threads about Machiavelli. After Machiavelli, one of my students astounded with me with a deep and somewhat controversial look at the art world. Nobody asked who is Monet or Degas, but some names slip into obscurity in history. A young lady in my class of research followed the trail of Pizarro the father of modern Impressionism, the man who sat in the cafe with the great French artist. She followed it all the way back to a small island in the Caribbean called St. Thomas. There she proved that an American British geologist from Maryland, James Gay Salt, actually was the foundation between that thinking. And Mr. James Gay Salkins was not only a mentor to a 17-year-old Pizarro, but years later, he would prove the ideas of Impressionism in a speech given to a university in, a, in of all places, Hawaii. Ideas and impressions that would come back to life 20 years later in the cafes of France. When a student says, I want to take a hard, cold look at school shootings, most school directors freeze and say no. But when a young, intelligent man from a country in South America wants to understand the drama and difficulties of his northern neighbor, that's what happened. My Chilean friend Tomas studied three famous school shootings that all coincided with similarities of matricide. One was actually Luke Woodham from my own hometown. He did not solve a major cultural world problem, but he did show us that the way we're teaching young men early in preschool may be disrupting their natural development, suppressing their natural development. And in a world today that throws around the world toxic masculinity, he may have actually found that we're starting the problems as early as three. Thanks to his understanding of the school shootings in America and how toxic masculinity is a topic of the day, we're redesigning our preschool program at our school. Other students went down fascinating avenues, such as my young girl from Turkey, Neil, a mathematician at heart who believes with all her heart that you can connect mathematics and emotional intelligence. She also worked very hard to survey a lot of small children to see if this was true. Like any good researcher, she admitted that her findings were not necessarily conclusive, but what she did teach us is that math and emotional intelligence are part of a fantastically organized universe. She proved what Einstein said all along, if you're going to split atoms, learn to play the violin. Along with emotional intelligence, one of my young students, Vivian, dove deeply into the world of psychology. She compared Western and Eastern cultures and their ability to face head-on emotional and mental challenges and how some cultures easily talk and share about their mental problems and others do not. Her specific focus on bipolar disorder gave her an insight into psychology and I believe will open a door for her to become one day a great psychiatrist. And then my young friend Jacqueline. 
Her love for the cello led her to one of the world's greatest celloists of all time, a young lady whose talent surpassed generations of artists until she was cut short and quick in her career and life by a debilitating disease. This young lady in my class, whose life mirror images this great artist, followed her path, studied her life, and saw the deep despair and cathartically learned from it herself. She has charted now a much better path for herself as an artist and future great celloist. You know, as a teacher, we often wonder what we're going to do with our retirement. What's going to be there when it's all gone? And today, there are a lot of questions about Eastern and Western trade. But thanks to my young student, Yuki, who looked even deeper into the American and Chinese trade world, even looking at statistics that some of the world trade organizations have not paid attention to, I'm convinced that my retirement funds have plenty of good places to go. In fact, I'm convinced that East-West trade relations have never been better. Isabel, thanks to this young artist, I actually climbed over cemetery walls in Mississippi and tore my pants. Thanks to Sybil, I'm not afraid of looking at the whole modern Western thought from a completely different point of view. <laughs> and Machiavellianism is no longer a negative word in my class. Thanks to Tomas, I'm reteaching how we teach young boys. Thanks to my young celloist, Jacqueline, Bach, Brahms, Elga, and Hayden are very much a part of our school lives. Thanks to Neil, I'm working math puzzles to preserve my own mind. Thanks to Vivian, I'm reading self-help books. And thanks to Yuki, I'm restructuring my retirement plan. You know, I'm no sleeping beauty, but these seven dudes and their love for learning changed me. Together we learned that not all questions can be answered, and sometimes the answer you may not like, or sometimes the answer is still in the future. But I know that I will grow old loving research because of them. Or maybe I'll stay young for the rest of my life. Why? Because through their eyes, through their minds, and almost perfectly edited papers, I have discovered the fountain of youth. I've pulled the threads of that tapestry, and I have renewed in myself a love of learning. Thank you.